Okay, let's go ahead and start doing some examples with the chain rule. So uh, example one here, we have y equals the sine of x squared. Uh, we want to know what is y primed. In other words, just find the derivative. Um, so basically, uh, this is probably one of the um, simplest examples that you could have with the chain rule application. Um, you know, you have the, instead of just the sine of x, you have the sine of x squared. So here's a function x squared, and it's sitting inside of another function sine. Okay. So uh, we have a function of a function. Um, and there's a couple different ways to think about how to do this. There's really only one way to use the chain rule, right? But there's a couple different ways to uh, think about it or talk about it. Uh, and because sine of x squared is kind of a uh, simple example compared to other ones that we could have, um, we'll do this a couple different ways. So let's zoom out a little bit. Um, first, uh, let's go ahead and say this. So let's erase this first. Uh, and we have y equals sine of x squared. So um, basically, when we do the chain rule, we have a function of composition, so we have f of g of x. So f uh, is going to be our outside function. And what's our outside function? Well, it's the sine. Okay, because uh, if we start at the x, okay, first we square it. That's the first thing we do. And then after that, uh, we take a sine. So uh, f is the sine. And then uh, g, the inside function, is going to be squaring. All right. So in other words, uh, f of x is the sine of x, all right, and uh, g of x is x squared. Okay. So y actually, um, y is sine of x squared, and that's uh, f of g of x. Okay, um, because f of x is sine of x and g of x is x squared, so f of g of x is going to be sine of g of x, right? f of g of x is sine of g of x, which is sine of x squared. All right, so um, that's pretty much what's going on here. So uh, the chain rule tells us that the derivative, uh, y primed, chain rule tells us that that equals f primed of g of x times g primed of x. All right. Um, well, what are these things here? Well, f of x is sine of x, so let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, f prime of x, we know, is cosine of x, right? Okay. Um, but we don't want f prime of x, right? We want f prime of g of x. Well, that's going to be uh, relatively simple. So f prime of x is cosine of x, so that means f prime of g of x is just cosine of g of x. All right, but what's g of x? Remember, g of x is x squared, right? So f prime to g of x is cosine of g of x, which is cosine of x squared. All right, so that's what f prime of g of x is. So we'll take that and put that over here. So y primed equals uh, cosine of x squared. All right, then we have to multiply by g prime of x. So that one's a little more straightforward. Um, g of x is x squared. Therefore, g prime of x is just uh, 2x, right? Just 2x. So uh, this is going to be cosine of x squared times 2x. Uh, and that's pretty much the answer there. Now, um, when you have stuff like this, like uh, an algebraic thing times a trig thing, uh, it's sort of customary to write the algebraic factor first. Um, but it doesn't really matter. All right. Uh, and there's our answer. So if y is the sine of x squared, uh, like this up here, then y primed, the derivative, is equal to 2x times the cosine of x squared. All right. So that's kind of a, one way of uh, thinking about the chain rule here, one way of interpreting it. And um, you know, we could do it like this because uh, sine of x squared is not really a complicated function. But for more complicated functions, uh, it's going to be harder to identify you know, f and g. Plus, uh, you, know, you might have uh, functions inside of functions inside of functions, and so on and so forth. So here we just have one function inside of one other one, and that's it. But you might have really complicated expressions um, that would make it difficult to do this kind of uh, process here. But um, let's talk about this same example in another way now. Uh, and this other way that we're going to do um, is how we'll pretty much do the rest of the examples also. Um, I just want to show you that other method first because it's kind of good to use those for the simpler ones, but for the more complicated ones, it might not be uh, as practical. But anyway, um, so same problem. 
y equals sine of x squared, and we want to find what is y primed. All right. So uh, the other way to think about this is pretty much the same way. You know, uh, like we said, there's only one way to do the chain rule. Um, there's only one way to use it, I guess, but there are a few different ways of thinking about it and talking about it. Um, so when we talked about the proof of the chain rule, we said that uh, d d x of f of g of x. Okay, remember what we said was uh, that's equal to the derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy times the derivative of the little guy. All right. So now we just have to identify what's the big guy and what's the little guy. Well, here, the big guy is what's happening to everything, okay? And, and what's happening to everything uh, is the sign, okay? Because that's what's on the outside. That's uh, the biggest thing that's on the outside. It's affecting everything. Here, the squared only affects the x and not the sign. So the squared is not the big guy. The squared is the little guy because it's inside of the sign. And the squared doesn't affect everything, just the x. Okay, so the big guy is going to be sine. So, um, okay, the chain rule says derivative of the big guy. And what's the derivative of sine? It's cosine, all right? And where are we evaluating cosine? We're evaluating it at the little guy. What is the little guy? It's x squared. Okay. So this is the derivative of the big guy evaluated at the little guy and then multiply it by the derivative of the little guy. Uh, the little guy is x squared, so the derivative of the little guy is 2x. Uh, and we see that uh, that's the same answer we had before. Okay. So um, it's pretty much the same thing, but uh, just kind of, you know, it's a different way of thinking about it. And of course, we get the same answer, right? Um, so that's two different ways of thinking about the uh, chain rule here. And for the rest of the examples that come up, we'll just do it the second way here. Um, because as the functions get more complicated, doing it the first way we talked about becomes a little more difficult uh, and pretty much impractical.